A tecnologia hoje anda cada vez mais rápido. Então mal a gente compra alguma coisa e ela já fica velha. Quando você muda de uma tecnologia para outra, você acaba perdendo muita coisa. Você perde, por exemplo, possibilidades, sonoridades, você perde até sensibilidades. Essa é a ideia de que as tecnologias obsoletas podem ser melhor utilizadas para criar novas perspectivas, novas sensibilidades, que às vezes a gente nem percebia que era possível quando elas ainda estavam na última moda. A tecnologia hoje anda depressa demais, não dá tempo nem de acompanhar. Você compra um celular e ele já está velho dali a um ano. Com isso, muita coisa está ficando para trás. Cada vez mais gente começa a olhar para o passado e ver que muita coisa interessante deixou de ser usada e poderia ser aproveitada para fazer coisas interessantes. Então, as tecnologias obsoletas estão voltando como ferramenta de criatividade. Então, tem gente no mundo inteiro usando cassetes para lançar música, usando chip de videogame antigo para também criar cenas musicais e até mesmo sintetizadores analógicos que eram usados nos anos 60 e 70, que são reconfigurados para fazerem sons que fazem sentido no mundo de hoje. Pouca gente se deu conta de que a velha fita cassete está voltando à moda. Então ela está se tornando cada vez mais um meio pelo qual música nova é lançada no mundo de hoje. Claro que esse não é um fenômeno de massas, mas um monte de novos selos aposta na fita como um novo formato para lançar música. É basicamente como like eu, sitting on my couch and drinking beer and like turning this on and then you just hit autocopy. It's easier to use than a CD burner. The Cure Toyo Club is a tape label that I started about a year ago, which basically is, I've always thought of it as like a clubhouse. I like, like to listen to tapes and figured that I like knew enough musicians who had cool stuff. In a lot of ways, they're like releases that are meant for a cassette, like they're not supposed to be the real album. Sometimes people will do 10 minute songs, 15 minute songs or whatever, like no big deal, stuff that they wouldn't put on their regular album because they think that it would like alienate some listeners, but like on a tape, it's cool because you know, you'd have to fast forward to find the next song anyway, and then you'd be lost and it's just like not gonna work. It's not about like making a profit or anything. I sent one of these to Slovenia like last week, like some kid in Slovenia is riding around in their car listening to this. That's awesome. Uma das coisas que as tecnologias obsoletas permitem é você trabalhar com limitações. Para muita gente, isso é importante para o processo criativo. É o caso de quem trabalha com músicas feitas com chips de 8 bits. Então, esses chips vêm de videogames que eram usados no começo da década de 80. E o som que eles produzem é um som muito limitado. Apesar disso, você tem um monte de gente reexplorando esses chips para fazer música que faz sentido no mundo de hoje. Some musicians just that maybe only want to play guitar or only play drums. Well, there's some people that only play Nintendo or only play a Game Boy. So when you say 8-bit music or chip music, it's really not a certain sound. It's not like it's rock music or it's electronic, you know, it's um, some type of dance music. It could be any type of music, but the key is that the sounds come from the chips inside the machines. It's like saying, oh, I hear you make guitar music. You know, you can't really answer that. And chip music's the same way. The sound is derivative from the instrument. So, you know, it's like calling rock and roll guitar music. This Nintendo has a very specific sound chip in it. The Game Boy that's handheld that a lot of musicians use also has a very specific sound chip in it. And unlike a modern computer where you can make any sound or you can have pre-recorded sounds, these chips are almost like little synthesizers and each one is very unique. 
when I started getting into this type of music, I realized there was a lot of people doing video art, but not many people were actually using the older hardware. So um, I started writing my own software, like you see here, to accompany the musicians when they're performing on stage. This is Vegavox 2, and uh, this is a piece of software that I wrote with my friend Alex Maurer. Vegavox is a cartridge, and you can place it in your Nintendo, and when you put it in and hit start, there's different animations, and um, with each of these animations, there's music. It's gonna sound clean, it's gonna sound natural, it's gonna sound best if it's actually on the cartridge. Nobody had really ever done it before, and it really wasn't that complicated. It's just a really good idea, and a lot of people have done it since, which is great. A lot of people do give this music out. One of the easiest ways to do that is through a net label, because they can distribute your music online in a place that everybody can get it. That's what's really nice about it, you just get online and at their form, chipmusic.org. You can just follow people's profiles and find where they're posting their stuff. One of the interesting things about making chip music or making chip video is that you have complete control. So you're the one writing the software, you're the one drawing the patterns, and you're the one that figures out the controls. So it's very highly personalized. Para muita gente, as referências culturais são livros, são filmes, é o cinema. Mas para uma nova geração, as referências culturais que são compartilhadas é na verdade os videogames, é na verdade o que você usava de tecnologia quando você era pequeno, era criança. There's something about like holding a tape that makes you feel like you're in the past, which can be nice. A lot of people say that the scene is all based on nostalgia, and it's just people wanting to look back at their youth and listen to music that reminds them when they were young. But the truth is that there's a whole bunch of people out there that never even had these machines. So they're drawn to it because of the technical challenges, because of the unique sounds, or just because if they have a computer that can do any type of music, it doesn't mean you can make good music. <laughs> Quando você muda de uma tecnologia para outra, você acaba perdendo muita coisa. Você perde, por exemplo, possibilidades, sonoridades, você perde até sensibilidades que poderiam ter sido desenvolvidas naquela tecnologia e que não deu certo, porque aquela tecnologia ficou para trás. Música